The cell theory is a set of principles that defines what it means for an organism to be a living organism. Now, the cell theory states that the basic unit of life is a cell, and all living organisms consist of one or more cells. It also states that cells arise from other pre-existing cells, and this means that living cells can replicate and reproduce to form other cells. Now, the focus of this lecture will be viruses, and viruses are basically small agents that infect other cells, and this includes animal cells, plant cells, as well as all different types of other cells. Now, viruses do not actually satisfy the cell theory. For example, as we'll see in just a moment, viruses cannot actually replicate and reproduce on their own, and that means viruses are not considered living organisms. They are non-living. Now, although viruses can come in many different forms and shapes and types, all viruses contain nucleic acids, either RNA or DNA, but viruses never contain both RNA and DNA. They only contain one or the other. Viruses also contain a protein covering that is found outside the nucleic acid inside the viruses, and this protein covering is known as a capsid. Now, some viruses also contain another covering that is made of lipids, and this is known as the lipid envelope, and the lipid envelope actually comes from other living cells. Now, the lipid envelope doesn't actually only act in protecting the cell, it also serves as an attachment. It basically allows the virus to attach onto living cells. So, the lipid code can have receptor proteins that can recognize and bind to other living cells, and in fact, those living cells. Now, as I mentioned earlier, viruses cannot actually reproduce on their own, and this is because they do not contain the proper machinery to actually reproduce and create the molecules needed for reproduction and division. For example, viruses do not have ribosomes, and that means they cannot themselves produce proteins. However, instead of actually replicating and dividing on their own, our viruses can actually actually infect living cells and use the machinery, the organelles of the living cells to actually reproduce and divide and form other viruses. So, one very common example of a virus, one very common type of a virus is a bacteriophage. And a bacteriophage is a virus that only targets and infects bacterial cells. So, basically, the structure of our bacteriophage looks something like this. We have our nucleic acids, either DNA or RNA, found inside the protein capsid. This is the protein capsid, also known as the head of our bacteriophage. We also have a protein midsection, as well as the protein tail. And in order to actually attach the virus onto the cell membrane of the bacteria, this tail, the bottom portion of the tail, actually has to attach to the proper receptor on the cell membrane of that bacteria. And once our attachment actually takes place, so following attachment, our bacteriophage injects the nucleic acids, either DNA or RNA, never both, into the cytoplasm of the cell. And within a short period of time, the cell begins to basically translate and synthesize the proteins encoded by the viral nucleic acid. Now, the bacteriophage usually undergoes a pathway, a cycle known as the lytic cycle, but other types of bacteria exist that can, or other types of viruses exist that can also undergo the lysogenic cycle. So, when the virus into the cell, there are two types of pathways that can be taken by that virus. We have the lytic cycle, the lytic pathway, as well as our lysogenic 
lipogenic cycle, lysogenic pathway. So let's begin by discussing the lytic cycle, which is basically followed by our bacteriophages, viruses that infect bacterial cells. So under this pathway, as soon as the virus actually injects itself into the cell or injects the nucleic acid into that cell, in the case of the bacteriophage, the bacteriophage only actually injects the nucleic acid into the cell. It leaves the protein tail, the protein midsection, and the protein capsid outside of that cell. So under this pathway, as soon as the virus is inside the cell, it directs the cell to synthesize new viruses by using the host cell's machinery. And this includes the nucleus, it includes the endoplasmic reticulum, it includes our ribosomes. So for example, ribosomes synthesize the protein coating our capsid and the viral nucleic acids are essentially replicated and placed inside those protein capsids. Eventually, our cell basically fills up with these new viruses and eventually the pressure as a result of the many different viruses inside the cell causes our cell to actually burst open and this process is known as lysing and that's exactly why this is known as the lytic cycle. Now once our cell lyses it releases all these new pro uh, all these new viruses and these viruses that are found outside the host cell are known as virins. Now, another method by which our cell can basically release the viruses onto the outside of the cell is by undergoing a type of process that looks like exocytosis, basically using the cell membrane to take our viruses and bring them outside of that cell. Now, the period between when our virus actually infects the cell and right before the cell lysis is known as the latent period. And this diagram basically describes the process by which the bacteriophage undergoes our lytic cycle. So in step one, our bacteria or our virus approaches the cell membrane of our bacterial cell. So we have the cell membrane, we have the bacteriophage. So our bottom portion of our tail protein of this bacteriophage attaches itself onto the proper receptor region on that cell membrane. At that point, this capsid essentially injects that nucleic acid into that cell through the uh, through the midsection and this capsid sec and this uh, tail section. So this entire protein tail and capsid in the midsection is left behind on the outside of that bacterial cell, while this nucleic acid, either DNA or RNA found in the capsid, is injected entirely into that bacterial cell. Now, in step three, we have the assembling process. So now the cell has been infected and the cell is in the latent period. So basically the cell is producing many new viruses as shown in the following diagram. And in the final step, because we have so many different viruses that increases the pressure and causes the cell to actually burst open and lies. And in this point, the cell basically dies, releasing all the the new virins into the outside portion surrounding that cell. And this process is known as the lytic cycle. Now a different process that other types of viruses undergo is known as the lysogenic cycle. Under this pathway, the viral DNA or RNA that enters that cell is basically incorporated into the host genome, the host's DNA. Now, certain viruses such as HIV do not contain DNA, they contain
contain RNA and they also contain special types of enzymes known as reverse transcriptase and these enzymes basically reverse transcribe the RNA into DNA and then that DNA is integrated is incorporated into the host cell genome the host cell DNA now once integrated into our DNA of the host the cell can basically live on and show no sign of actual infection and this stage this phase is known as the dormant period. Now, of course, eventually we can have some type of environmental factor that can cause the cell to basically undergo the lytic cycle. For example, UV radiation is one form of environmental factor that can basically take a cell under the lysogenic cycle and transform it into the lytic cycle, force it to go into the lytic cycle and produce many different viruses and eventually lice. So a cell whose genome contains a viral DNA section inside that cell is known as a provirus. So these are the two types of cycles of pathways that can be followed by our cell once the virus actually injects itself or injects the nucleic acid into that host cell. A specific type of virus that only infects and targets bacterial cells is known as the bacteriophage and this usually undergoes the lytic cycle. There are also different types of viruses, for example, the HIV viruses, a virus that doesn't only undergo the lytic cycle, it can also undergo the lysogenic cycle. In the lysogenic cycle, the DNA of that virus is actually incorporated, it's integrated with the DNA of that host cell. Now, what exactly is the main difference between the lytic cycle and the lysogenic cycle? Well, the lytic cycle isn't very useful because it actually kills off that host cell. So once the cell dies, the viruses have to find other cells to actually infect. However, the lysogenic cycle is more useful because the virus doesn't actually directly and immediately kill off that cell. It incorporates into the cell and can undergo the lytic cycle anytime it wants to, basically when it is stressed by certain types of environmental factors such as, for example, heat or UV radiation.